The first double slate experiment was designed to settle a scientific view as to the very nature of light. There was a group of scientists that believed light travelled in a form of particles, while another group of scientists believed that light travelled in a form of waves. So in 1801, Thomas Young designed an experiment to settle this dispute. Uh, the experiment was pretty simple. There was a steady source of light, two slits and a screen that would show the impact of light. Uh, so if the screen showed two separate bands, that would mean light travelled in a form of particles. But the experiment showed something different. There was an interference pattern, and this interference pattern means that light travelled in a form of waves that interfere with each other, collide with each other, and thus yield this interference pattern. So this pretty much settled a dispute as to the nature of light. And later, with technology and the advance in technology, the experiment could be replicated but instead of using uh, a normal steady source of light, a particle gun was used. Now, a particle gun is a gun capable of shooting one single particle at a time. Now, you would expect that with one single particle, this particle would pass through the slit, hit the screen in its predictable spot, and at the end yield two bands of light. But the experiment yielded something different another interference pattern. Now this was pretty surprising because how could one single particle create an interference pattern? It, has, it had nothing to interfere with, nothing to collide with. So to verify why this could happen, a measuring device was called into play and it was put adjacent to the slit. Now the role of the measuring device was to chronicle the trajectory of the particle from the particle gun, passing through the slits and hitting the screen. And by the way, what was true with the particle was even true with uh, bigger units like molecules and atoms. Now, the very act of using a measuring device altered the results of the experiment. Now, when the measuring device was put adjacent to the double slits, instead of having an interference pattern, the experiment had a different outcome. There were two separate bands of light corresponding to the two slits. Now that was even more baffling because how could the very act of observing change the outcome of the experiment? Now to account for this phenomenon, a lot of interpretations were called into play. Now the most notable one is the Copenhagen experiment or, sorry, the Copenhagen Interpretation. Now, the Copenhagen Interpretation uh, upholds that when the one single particle behaves as a wave, this wave symbolizes a capsule that encapsulates all the possibilities that this particle could exist in. Because in quantum physics, all particles are in a probability state. So this wave is a capsule that refers to the many possibilities that this particle could exist in, those possibilities being the particle passing through the first slit, the particle passing through the second slit, or the particle hitting the wall separating the two slits. And when there is no observation, this particle remains in a probability state, traveling from the, the particle gone, passing through the slits and hitting the screen, thus creating the interference pattern. But the moment you observe this particle, you force it to exist in one of those possibilities. So the very act of observing is what causes things to exist. Things are in a probability state until they are observed. This is very redolent of Schrodinger's example of the cat in a box. So basically, it's, you have a cat in a box and you do not know whether this cat is alive or dead. So according to the interpretation, to the Copenhagen interpreta interpretation, inside, you, inside this box, the one cat becomes two cats because the cat is in, is in a probability state. One cat is dead and one cat is alive. And when you open the box 
and observe, you can show, you force the cat to choose one possibility. This is the same thing that happens with a particle. Another interpretation of the double slit experiment is called the decoherence uh, interpretation. So according to this interpretation, when, you sh when the particle behaves as a wave, it does so because it is in agreement with the laws of quantum physics. Because in quantum physics, all units and particles are in the probability state. So when you are operating in the realm of quantum physics, everything is in agreement is, and everything is coherent within the scope of quantum physics. But the moment you, you bring to the equation a measuring device or you observe with your eyes, you shatter the realm of uh, quantum physics and you cause what is called the collapse of the wave uh, because when you when you introduce something that does not belong to the realm of quantum physics you cause decoherence and this is why the interpretation is called the decoherence interpretation now another interpretation of this phenomenon is called the many words interpretation it was put forward by david deutsch and according to David Deutsch, in his book, The Fabric of Reality, uh, the double slit experiment is evidence uh, that there are multiverses. So, uh, roughly, the book says that uh, just like this particle behaving as a wave and being in a probability state, everything in the universe is in a probability state. So you are in a probability state, I am in a probability state, the planet is in a probability state. What does that mean? It means that for everything, there is another replica that behaves differently. So when you wake up in the morning and you turn whether to, to have tea or coffee, there is one version of you that has coffee and one version of you that has tea. So there is, there is a universe, the universe that we know, and there are other universes that we don't know. Everything is in a probability state. So that is the theory of uh, David uh, Deutsch that he expressed in his book, The Fabric of Reality. This video has reached its end. If you like to thumb it up, if you dislike to thumb it down, what do you think matters? And until we meet again, have a great day.